While we're waiting for some other members to join, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get started with just a little bit of housekeeping for this evening. It is six o'clock now, so we'll go ahead and get started. First, I wanna welcome all of you to this webinar. Part of our series for the RIT NTID alumni, so welcome. We're happy to be here tonight hosting a happy hour type of webinar. It's a little bit different this evening. I do wanna start off with just reminding you a few things. We do have a captionist. We have captioning on the bottom of our screen and we have two interpreters working into English for the captionists. If you want to listen to the audio, you should be able to do that as well. You also should be able to see a shared screen right now with a few different tips and information. It explains how to get that captioning set up. Some of you might not be familiar with captioning, so it will explain to you how to do that if you wanna take a look at that screen. Now we will utilize the question and answer portion after the presentation, we'll have panelists share their experiences and then we'll open everything up to questions and answers a little bit later on during the webinar. Well, to begin, my name is Ann Macko. If you don't know me, I wish I could see all of your lovely faces this evening, but unfortunately you're only going to be able to see us. I know many of you joining, I know some of you quite well, and I appreciate you all coming this evening. I do wanna thank our interpreters and our captionists for this evening. And I also want to thank Sorensen for sponsoring this whole webinar series. We really appreciate your support for this, so thank you. I think with that being said, we're ready to jump right into the presentation. Could we go to the next slide? Great. I will be talking briefly, I promise. I'll be talking just a little bit about alumni benefits. There are many alumni out there, regardless of their date of graduation, they might be a veteran, they might be a newer alumni, but many of our alumni don't know the benefits and what you can gain from being an alumni of RIT and NTID. So I thought this would be a good time to share some specifics and some good information. Plus we have panelists who've been involved and have been very supportive within our alumni efforts and they'll be able to share their experiences and stories as well. To start, I do wanna do a quick poll This is just a quick poll. And the reason for this is I want to get to know a little bit more about who our audience is this evening. I know I saw many of you register, but I'm wondering a little bit about what you know in regards to benefits and what you don't know, which will help me know what to talk about. And it will also let the panelists know what they should be talking about. I'm gonna ask our tech genius Patrick tonight to start the poll. When you see the question pop up on your screen, you should be able to move your cursor around a little bit, click on your answer and get that submitted. And then hopefully we'll be able to see the answer to the first question and start to get to know a little bit more about one another. This is our first time trying this poll feature, so it's gonna be a little trial and error. Patrick, should we go ahead and get started? Hopefully you saw a question pop up. You did go ahead and click on whichever decade most closely matches when you graduated. It looks like many of you are from the last few years. Oh no, they're actually many from the 90s. Okay, great, this is very interesting. It's nice to know a little bit about more, a little bit more about all of you. We have a good variety of years. Myself, I came in in 88. So I'm a part of that 80s, 90s group. All right. 
there's going to be another question for the group. Let's go ahead and pop that second question up. There are five questions altogether. Let's see if we can pull up the next question, Patrick. Give you a minute to get that taken care of. This one is a yes or no. Do you know where to find information about RIT and TID events and activities and what the alumni are doing? There are actually multiple different places where you can find that information. All right, it seems like many of you do. Many of you are aware of places that you can look, but there's still quite a few of you who aren't. And that's okay because we will be sharing more information with you tonight on where you can look for that. So that's great for us to know. All right, here's our third question. The third question asks, as an alum, do you know about the benefits and the community that you have access to? That could be from alumni relations, from RIT and NTID. Let us know yes or no. It seems like many of you are not aware. Okay. Well, thank you. Again, that's good because that's part of the reason why you joined the webinar, right? You want to learn some more? See what else there might be out there for you? This is going to be a perfect fit then. You're here in the right place. All right, next. Are you already in touch with fellow alumni in your local community or elsewhere? Do you keep in touch with them? Maybe socialize with other alumni? There's some yeses and some noes, okay. Yeah. A little bit of both. And again, that's okay. Some of us are busy. We don't have much time in our schedules. Others are more involved and that's okay. Really the point that we wanted to make here and the point with the webinar tonight is you can be in, as involved as you want. You can have a little involvement or you can have a lot of involvement and that's up to you. Let's pull up our next question. Have you been involved in past alumni events? Have you attended an event, volunteered at an event? Have you visited campus or presented to students? Maybe I've met you during travels. Let us know, yes or no. All right, many of you have. Wonderful. That's great. Maybe tonight you'll learn a little bit more about a new way that you could get involved as well. Again, there are many ways to get involved. And again, it can be a little involvement or a lot of involvement. It's really what you want to make of it. Was that the last question? I believe so. Let's see if another one pops up. Okay, that was the last question. Great. Well, thank you all for participating in the poll. That was pretty easy, right? And it's nice to help us get to know the audience a little bit. I'm going to start talking a little bit about the different benefits now. Now this is a little bit of the dry part. It might be the boring part. And if so, just sit back and watch and then soon enough we'll hand it over to the panelists. This slide is going to talk about the different career services that we offer at NTID. Whether you're working or you're in between jobs or you have a connection, maybe you want a new connection and a new network, we have benefits for you. I do want to mention what I talk about tonight is not an exhaustive list. It's impossible for me to talk about all of the benefits that we have in just a few short minutes. That would take far too long. I'm just talking about a few of the benefits to give you an idea now you can always find more information about a variety of benefits on the website. 
and this will be shared with you as well. So don't worry about trying to take notes or document those website URLs right now. I will be sending the PowerPoint out to all of you after the webinar has concluded. Plus, the webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the NTID YouTube channel as well, so just know that. Now, in regards to career services, I'm sure many of you know we do have the NCE, the NTID Center for Employment, and it's a wonderful resource that alumni are able to use alongside our students. There's actually an alumni page on the website that is full of information. You can reach out to employment advisors in the NCE, talk about your resume, get that cleaned up, practice interviews, or even just look for new connections within your field. If you're interested in any of that, contact the NTID Center for Employment. We also offer the NTID Career Fair annually, and our alumni are welcome to that. Of course, you typically have to be local in order to come to campus, but I want you all to know that you are welcome at that career fair. It does typically happen in October, and of course, because of the pandemic, it will look different this year. If you're already working and your employer is looking for a co-op student or looking for a new hire, you can also reach out to the NCE and let them know that and the NCE could work with your employer and hopefully pull in another deaf coworker into your organization. The last thing I want to mention is we do have an NTID alumni LinkedIn group that you can take a look at. We post different job information there. We welcome RIT and NTID alumni, and we're always building and improving upon that platform. Go ahead and jump to the next slide. We talked about career benefits. Now we'll talk about educational benefits. I bet you don't know about RITx. They have over 25 different professional certifications, certificates, and it's not necessarily a degree, but kind of a mini professional certificate that you can take within RITx. There are different trainings that can benefit you. They are for pay, but you can also audit those classes for free. And again, there's a website there that you can look at to learn some more information. Jumping down to the next bullet, if you do meet a prospective student out there, you as an alumni can offer a waiver for their application fee. I'm not sure how much the fee is right now. I'm going to assume it's about $60 and you can offer that waiver. It's done online. I'll provide the link after this webinar as well. And all you have to do is fill out your name and the name of the student. Let us know that you would like their application fee waived and it's as simple as that. And then they're able to apply for free. I would encourage many of you to reach out to prospective students and offer them that support. The final bullet here is webinars. This series of webinars hopefully will benefit you. RIT also has their own RIT alumni webinars. Those are all accessible. Most of the time they have interpreters now and they are captioned as well and they have many on the YouTube channel that have been pre-recorded as well. Ours will be posted on the NTID YouTube channel, but you can look at either of them and hear about different information on really any type of topic you can think of. It's pretty cool. All right, next slide, please. Now, if you come to campus, you come to Rochester, which we hope you do come and visit us, of course, when we can have visitors again. We hope that you come and you will access these benefits on campus. Some actually are remote as well, I'm realizing. You do have access to an alumni email account. You can get access to here through this website. And you can use that for Gmail, for the alumni network. And the alumni network is another online resource 
that you input your profile and other alumni input their own profiles. And then you can search for your friends from your college days. You can search by your state and location. You can search by your profession. It's pretty cool. And of course, it only searches by whatever information you have input into your profile, but it's another nice way for us to network with one another. On campus, you have access to the recreational facilities at a reduced fee. That includes the Gordon Field House, the track, the pool. It's a nice way to keep fit while you're visiting campus. We also offer alumni legacy endowed scholarships. And that's for alumni like us who have children who hope to go to RIT. When they're accepted, you can contact RIT and say that you want to apply for the Legacy Endowed Scholarship and your child might be selected for that. And the last bullet here is the Lavazzo Alumni House. If you haven't seen it yet, you need to come to campus and take a look around. It's very nice and we've hosted a few events there. Hopefully we'll host more in the future. We plan to bring in guest speakers. It's a beautiful new building on campus. If you contributed to that, we thank you for your support. Next slide. I think this might be one of my last ones, if not my last one. Now, everything that I was just talking about, those are more tangible benefits, things that you can physically receive or access. But remember, there's a whole nother type of benefits as well in the alumni community. We alumni have a strong connection within our individual communities and with each other. And we need to take advantage of the network and the connections that we have. Networking is always number one as how students and new colleagues, new employees are able to get access to their jobs. We have a widespread network and We hope that we'll be able to connect you to other alumni. There's also the NTID Alumni Association Board, and that's by invitation. And it's a very caring group of people. We actually have a few people on our panel today who will talk about the Alumni Association Board. It's really a nice group of hardworking individuals that come together and really they help make things happen at NTID and within the NTID alumni community. What we have within that board is beautiful. We have some other program related groups. If you graduated like from the LST, Lab Science Technology Group, or from the Engineering Department, those individual programs often have their own advisory groups. You may have heard about them, and if you have, I would encourage you to get involved. Finally, we do have some special projects come up occasionally. If you wanna get involved in any way, let me know, and I can let you know if we have a group available for you to join. For example, the Dyer Arts Gallery or the Dyer Arts Center, they have an advisory group and there are multiple different groups that we have for the alumni of NTID. If you're interested, let me know. All right, last one and then we'll jump to the panel. Now, what can you do? What can you do to get involved or to contribute back to your alma mater and your alumni community. There's a few ideas up here. You could help with local events. We are going to be hosting some online virtual events and eventually we'll be able to host more in-person events in the future. You could again encourage prospective students to apply and let them know about your experience at NTID. You can support events and other things happening within the NTID community and within your own individual communities and states. You can always share our posts on social media. 
We're always on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and whatever you see, we hope that you'll let other alumni know what's going on as well to really help that word spread. You can connect NCE, the NTID Center for Employment, to your company, make an introduction, and see if maybe a relationship can grow from there. And if you have any other ideas, reach out to me. My door is always open. I would love to talk with you. I love hearing from everyone in our alumni community. All right, well, that's my presentation for today. And really, now I know we wanna to get to the fun part. And I want you to hear from our panelists. We have four panelists this evening, and I'm gonna ask them to turn their videos on now. We have Amelia Hamilton, and she's going to be acting as our moderator this evening, leading the questions and asking our panelists those questions. We have Tracy Ivey. We have Norma. And I'm gonna ask all of our panelists to turn on their screens now. Christy is our fourth panelist. Hello, everyone. You all look beautiful. I'm going to st take a step back and let the four of you have the virtual floor. Thank you again so much for being here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and get started. Is everybody ready? All right, our first question. Tell me how you've been involved with the alumni network so far. Have you been on a committee or maybe on the board? And what has it meant to you? How has it been giving back to your, as an alumni, giving back to your alma mater? Who wants to go first? Okay, fine. This is Tracy. Hi everyone, my name is Tracy Ivy. And I have been involved with the board. I've been involved with various committees as well. And both of those have helped me increase my leadership abilities. I'm a teacher and educator now. And without those opportunities, I would never have been where I am today. I do see the benefits of networking. I'm able to hear about different issues out there in our community and make those a part of my lived experiences as well. Thank you for that. Does anybody have anything else they want to add? Sure. My name is Christy Ong, and I am involved in the NTID Alumni Association Board. I have been for seven years now. Originally, Greg Pollock is the person who invited me to join that. I was on the Alumni Training Committee, and that went along well and led to my official invitation to the Alumni Association Board. Now I'm actually the chairperson of the committee and we work to develop relationships with the NCE, the student life team, SLT, and we also host a pin at the NTID graduation. I'm sure some of you from this last year saw that you received that pin. That's actually from the Alumni Association Board. We also do a barbecue activity or we did at the 50th reunion that was a large event hopefully many of you were able to join us there and i really had a lot of great experiences just like tracy mentioned i feel like the experiences have all been very rich hi my name is norma moran and i'm a new member of the advisory group within nag um, i just joined last year I did participate in the 50th reunion and um, I do remember the pin. I had been actually planning for about a year and a half and then finally during the 50th anniversary, I was able to come back to campus and that's when I started um, getting involved with NAG. You know, I, when I look back and think about my experience at NTID, you know, I have so many great experiences there. And I really wanted to basically encourage change and be able to be a part of what's happening now. Great, thank you. The second question is looking back to your graduation, what do you wish that you had known as a new alumni? Take a minute to ponder that if you need. Norma? 
when I look back, I wish that I knew, actually before I became an alumni, I wish I had known to keep in touch. You know, I, I graduated back in 2000. I pretty much uh, went right back home. And at the same time, I just lost all touch with what was happening on campus, what was happening with a lot of people. And it took a long time for me to really start to reconnect with people. And I thought, why did it take me so long? You know, I've, I had so many great friends at NTID that was always like home to me. And I wish that I had thought about that back then. You know, Lorianne really opened the door for me and I was so happy and I am so happy to be here tonight with you guys and just going on this new journey. And I'm realizing that I don't have to go on the journey alone. This is Christy. I think networking. I mean, just thinking of 50 years of NTID, right? There are people in every local community, some that you may have met, some that you know from your own graduating class, and others that you have not yet had the opportunity to meet. I think knowing, though, that there is that network, you need to always keep your door open because you never know who you're going to end up meeting and who you might be able to help or who might be able to help you, especially when it comes to employment. Plus there's things like nonprofit organizations and other opportunities. It really just comes back to help. I can answer that. This is Tracy. When I left and I graduated, I didn't really take the time to think about all of the benefits that would be available to me as an alumni. And I wish I would have taken advantage of that. I mean, often students who are graduating, you know, you're asked about the alumni network, you're asked to, you know, to keep in touch, but to really internalize that and really do that in the future. And for my future, that's not something that I took advantage of. And I really wish that, you know, I had taken advantage of that more. Thank you all. I actually just graduated. So looking at the three of you, I do think it's important to get involved now so that I maintain that involvement moving forward. Thank you to you three and all of our viewers tonight as well. Next question is what opportunities do you want alumni relations to incorporate moving forward? What sort of new opportunities do you see starting to be offered? I could take that one. This is Tracy. I wish that we had some type of job fair. I know that there is a career fair, but it would be great to have one specifically for alumni. You know, there are so many different locations all over the United States. There's Death Expo, and, but they, and they do have a job fair right there. So that would be a nice way to kind of bring more people into the network. NTID, you know, they are so great with recruiting and getting different opportunities for people in Rochester, but it would be really nice to kind of expand that farther into the country and to offer that in different places, not just in Rochester. You know, just to kind of encourage people like this is what we can offer you at NTID and, and teach them more about what, what we have. That's a great idea. Anything from Christy or Norma? Yeah, I have more of a question to the people who are watching tonight. We want to hear from you. You know, you are what makes us unique. And it's important to make sure that your ideas are incorporated into what NTID will be doing and providing moving forward. I mean, you are the community and you all, you each have a very important role. So I'm just gonna put that out there for everybody else to add comments as well. I'd like to add to that. Maybe we can encourage the alumni to reach out to the alumni association with different ideas to hopefully get more involved. Norma, did you wanna say something? Yeah, one thing that I want to say is just to encourage the alumni, even the people who graduate, graduated many years ago, it doesn't matter if you just graduated last year or you've been, you know, a graduate for many years. You know, basically, we need to be able to learn from each other now and see where everybody is now. You know, there are so many things going on. There's TEDx and other organizations like that. And it's great to take advantage of that and be able to use our expertise to help the NTID culture grow. You know, we're all still learning. So I think that just emphasizing everyone and seeing what everyone is curious on and what everybody could contribute to the network, I think that would give a lot of new opportunities to everyone and a new experience as well. For sure. As a recent alum, I'm thinking maybe, you know, NSC, the NTID Student Congress? 
they typically, I think, what, three or four times a semester do bring in guest speakers from various organizations to talk about different services and opportunities that are out there. Maybe NSC could start bringing in alumni to allow more conversation that way. I know that there are some great experiences out there that would maybe help our students get more prepared. We might have better signups. We might have people be more prepared to know what to expect post-graduation. I don't know, just an idea. This is Christy. Yeah, I just want to add what, what you said just reminded me for NCE and the student life team. There are a few different ways that we could participate, really. You know, maybe you're really good at a particular field. You could contact NCE and you could present your expertise to the alumni network. We're always looking for people to be able to share their expertise. And you all have such a vast knowledge base and I think it would be fantastic for you to share that now, especially now in terms of this pandemic, everything is happening on webinars. It'd be a great way for us to share our expertise with others. Right, and NTID current students need role models. I think that would be wonderful to have alumni coming in who are just like they. Yeah, what Christy said just reminded me. You know, NTID often has workshops every Wednesday, and that could really open up a new opportunity for alumni to participate. Also, we could have speakers and, you know, really change it up. So Christy, that was a really wonderful idea. I think it would be a great idea if we as alumni could share the knowledge that we have and really offer some new topics potentially and really, you know, share our knowledge. You know, maybe um, someone has a job right now that we didn't even know would be a possibility. I think it would be great to share. I wanted to add again, I actually remember there was a pen pal program. I think it was AOS pen pal. That was a wonderful way for students to get involved with alumni. Christy or Norma? Yeah, this is Norma. Also, there's the, did you catch that, Jenna? Latin American Deaf Club. That and Deaf Club, and that was also something that was established in 1995. It's nice just to check to see what's going on with that club from time to time and what they're working on. And maybe I could reach out to them and say, how could I be of support to you? I was a member back in the day and it would be great for me to reach out now and share any experience that I might have and add to their growth. You know, just a way to give back. I have another question for the three of you. If you could give advice to other alumni on why it's important to be involved and how to get involved, what would you say to them on the importance of being involved with alumni life? I can take that one. This is Norma. You know, I would just start the conversation. Like, do you know all of these fantastic benefits that NTID has available to their alumni? And really encourage them to get involved. Say, you know, you should come join something. You should come see what's going on. You know, there, we need to have more alumni involved, have more of a discussion, and, but just sharing all of the benefits that are available. It's a great way for the deaf community also, not just to be, you know, talking about specific issues, but saying, you know, did, did, you, did you watch this webinar or did you participate in this alumni event? And I think it's sometimes I end up feeling a little bit out of touch, but, you know, just a way to make you think about a little bit more and be more involved. Actually related to what you were saying, Norma, NTID is always learning, right? They have new technologies and new information. So I'm thinking if we were to reach out more, that's only going to help improve the situation for everyone. It'll be a win-win. You can bring information back to your home communities, be they DC or Minneapolis or Seattle, Austin. Yeah, Tracy. Yeah, this is Tracy. RIT and NTID are a great learning organization, right? But we're responsible for continuing our own learning as alumni. So we always have to continue learning. And being involved with RIT and NTID through workshops, seminars, webinars, it allows us as individuals to continue our own growth. And once we are able to continue our own growth, that's how we're able to give back 
to the students and give back to the university. And it's a way to continue learning as well. You know, it's kind of that reciprocation and being able to give back, but also learning more ourselves as well. Great, thank you. I know you've all been involved in alumni life. What's one of your most memorable moments as an alumna? One thing that you look back on and you're grateful or proud to be an alumni as a result of? Tracy? So now that I have a job, And you know, I have leadership skills. And I know that NTID and RIT gave me a lot of skills and I'm very appreciative of that. And I think that we are responsible as alumni, you know, to, like I said, continue our growth and share our stories. And I think it's really powerful. Our stories are a very powerful tool that we could use to teach. So that's something that I've enjoyed. This is Norma. I actually went to graduate school at American University in Washington, DC. I got my MA from there. And after two years, I was taking my capstone course. And you have to do capstone planning, basically a lit review, develop a research question, all of that. Now, I had actually majored in a program at RIT that had prepared me for this capstone class. Most of the other students did not have that because they didn't have senior projects. So coming into my master's capstone, I was already prepared. I was basically ahead of the game. And I'm so thankful to RIT for having prepared me for that. Many of my classmates had graduated from Ivy League schools and they still weren't prepared for it. I actually sent in a letter after the fact to my former department thanking them for truly getting me ready for the real world. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. Actually, so you mentioned your thesis and your capstone, right? I actually am a graduate from basically your program's sister program. And you're right, I think it really helped me to be ready. I applied for the Fulbright grant and I got that. I went to Italy and I was able to meet many deaf Italians and they were all very curious about NTID as well. I was very proud to be an alum and to be able to talk to them about all of the available resources and you know, whether those be technical majors or liberal arts majors. And I think there are so many different parts of my life that the NTID network has shown up in. It's just been a very powerful network and I think it will continue to be. Yeah, Tracy. Sure. When we graduate, we get into the real world, right? But that doesn't mean that our relationship with, with NTID is over. It's really important to continue to share our, our experience and share our stories. You know, we think, you know, NTID is here and the real world is everybody else, but it's important that we keep bringing people back to NTID and make sure that that connection stays strong and that it continues. We have to really foster that relationship as much as we can. Thank you. Your comments are making me miss RIT already, even though I was just there. All right, we have a few questions coming in from the community. One person said that they missed the 50th reunion and they're wondering if any more reunions are coming up. Does anyone know the answer? Yeah, we're gonna be having one, but it's the 100th is gonna be for another 50 years. It's gonna be a while. <laughs> well, well, wait a second. If we had a 50th anniversary, maybe they'll have a 75th. Yeah, I think a 75th. Maybe Lori Ann will answer that one a little later on. Sorry, I don't know the exact. <laughs> Lori Ann, do you know the answer? What do you say, would it be 75? You want me to answer that? Hello again, everyone. This is Lori Ann. The short answer here is we do typically host reunions every five years. 
meaning people are already asking me about the next reunion, right? And that's exciting. I think we will probably have a small 55th reunion. I can't promise it, but we'll see what happens. The next large reunion, though, will, you're right, be the 75th, and I will not be leading that. Someone else will have the pleasure of leading that reunion. Oh, thank you for, for joining in, Lorian. All right, what networking advice do you have to NTID and RIT alumni? What advice do you have to new alumni? Yeah, Tracy. I have a very good relationship with the NTID Employment Advisory Group. I have a great relationship with them. It's important, I think, to develop relationship with older individuals, whether they be the employment advisors, the chairperson. You know, you don't have to be involved just for your years at NTID, but stay involved and continue with that networking. Yeah, you're right. Anybody else? Yeah, to add to that, don't be shy or embarrassed to reach out to other alumni. Go for it. Send an email. Most likely, they're going to be thrilled and want to talk to you and want to support you through whatever you might need. I think that's one great thing of this community. Really, don't feel afraid or ashamed to reach out and ask for help and support. Okay, great. Next question. Let's see. All right, hang on a second. It's a big one, so let me consolidate it here. If you could identify one changing point in your career at NTID and RIT during your college career, what would that changing point be? And how did that shape your identity as a person? Was it a particular professor or something particular that happened, something that you were studying? Was it an organization or a club that helped develop your identity? Maybe a fraternity or a sorority? So what, what was that turning point for you as a college student? I know it's a really good question, isn't it? Makes you think. This is Tracy. That is a good question. I came into NTID and then I transferred over to RIT. And English, I remember you had to go chapter what? One, two, three, and NTID. And I remember there was one professor who said, I wish we had a multicultural perspective who could understand your black language. And I was inspired by that. It was a white professor who said that. And they told me that my writing wasn't wrong. It was just part of my culture. And that was a culture they weren't a part of. So they weren't criticizing me. They were really praising my culture. And that was a turning point. I've now become an educator and I essentially say the same thing to my students now that yes, you might be using quote unquote black language and that's okay because that's your culture. And I think it's a beautiful part of your culture. That instructor I had who told me that was just, wow. It was inspiring. I'm feeling blessed to have that and now really cherish and value my culture. Oh my gosh, you gave me goosebumps. That's a good, great story. Yeah, that's powerful. Thank you. So uh, Norma or Christy, do you have anything to add? Yeah, this is Christy. I actually was involved with NSC. I was the director of communications and that was really fun for me. I remember being able to do the marketing and promotions for different clubs and their events and events that we at NSC were hosting. And then that was a part of, and of RIT's student government as well. So those were two big leadership roles that I was able to benefit a lot from. Now being on the Alumni Association Board, we have Robert Sedansky, who I met years ago at Deaf Academic Bowl. That was in high school. So I met him and he was a coach and I never knew that he was an alumni of RIT and NTID. Now we actually work together and we volunteer together. We're on the board with each other. So it's just fun to see different connections and different points of meeting someone and not knowing where you might see them again. So I think really NSC was where I started to get inspired and it has led me to where I am today. All right, Norma, do you have anything else to add? Sorry, I'm a little distracted. I have a little friend here. Okay, hang on one second. I'm in a meeting, okay? 
Sorry, <laughs> I knew this would happen. I knew that a child or someone would come up. Um, so that is a fantastic question to whoever asked that. Oh, thank you for making me think. You know, this might be a small moment, but it's something that has stuck with me for years and years. So I came in at 95, in 95. And at that time, there was no um, deaf Latin group or anything. The next year, in 1996, we finally appointed Dr. Dr. Robert Davila as NTID's, what was it called at that time, the first vice president, right? And at that time, it was a really big deal. They were doing a lot of restructuring at the university. And we invited Davila. And he, at that time, he was working with um, the student, what was it called? Was it called Deaf Eyes? So we ended up interviewing Davila. He came and sat down in our office, and I still remember that today. And we were able to interview him. And at the same time, you know, he was talking about his experience growing up and struggling and feeling oppressed. He grew up um, with a poor family, and he was able to succeed. He achieved his PhD, and he achieved the position that he had in the university. And it really motivated me. So, you know, at the same time, it, made, it motivated me to become more involved with different organizations and to see all that Dr. Davila had done and all that was possible and how that could apply to anyone. You know, to this day, that small moment really impacted me and really helped me become who I am today. Great, thank you. I think for me, back in around 2005, the organization Doves was created. It's a deaf woman group. It wasn't a fraternity or sorority. It was an organization that anyone could get involved with. They ended up shutting down and then I came in and I don't even remember what year I came into NTID. But I came in and there was no female sponsored group. There was no group to go to to talk about issues that I was experiencing. So Doves came back and I saw many deaf women getting involved to talk about issues related to women. We hosted things like Deaf Women's Week and self-defense classes. We had guest speakers come in and it was a great way to see women gaining more and more confidence within themselves and then giving back to other clubs on campus. So I think that's something that's always going to really help me know and define who I am as a woman. Let's go back to another question. Why should alumni come to campus? Why is it beneficial for alumni to come during big events like homecoming or Imagine RIT? Hi, this is Norma. RIT started and it really helped me remember um, a lot of the spring events. What's the one in the spring called Imagine or Imagine? Oh, Im Imagine RIT. Right. And that was going on for a few years. The third year, I felt a little bit more motivated. And I thought, okay, I can take my child. They were, I think they're about six or seven. So we went and oh my God, we loved it. It was so cool to see all the creativity happening on campus. You know, basically, we've been going now for years since my child was a, was a young child. And I've realized, wow, there's so many benefits here, like so many things that you can see. I mean, the second time and the third time that we went, we really enjoyed it. And now, you know, having other younger children be able to go and benefit from that experience is really great. Did anyone else want to add, Christy? Yeah, also as a board member, just being able to go to meetings in the spring and the fall is nice. And at those times, I always feel like I'm learning something new about campus. There's always a new building being built or, you know, there's a new major that has been developed and I'm constantly amazed at all the changes that are happening on campus. One time on campus, I was able to check out the new um, film studio. I was really impressed. It was fantastic. You know, it was like state of the art, like we'd see in Hollywood. It was really a beautiful, beautiful space. You know, there are videos that the students are able to use or, you know, equipment that the students are able to use. And, you know, it's important. It's important to reach out because you never know what's happening back on campus and how those resources could be a benefit to you and what you're doing in your career and in your life. Great. 
Another question from the audience. What can alumni do to aid in the recruitment of potential NTID students? Any ideas? I could take this one. I have one idea. An indirect way is just to subscribe, you know, to be able to give back. And, you know, obviously people can't donate millions of dollars, but basically just being able to give back just a small bit, even if you only have a few dollars, VR support is um, decreasing every year. So for a lot of students, it, it's a challenge. So being able to pay it forward and to help students who are are there now and being able to encourage students to go and see all the support that is available would be really great to help these students with their studies. This is Tracy. What I've noticed is there's students who don't have much money, you know, things like textbooks alone are expensive. So I'm thinking that RIT should reach out to alumni and talk about books that are out there, see if they can't get them donated and then have the books ready to give to students. They could be free textbooks ready for our NTID students. I think that would be a great opportunity. I don't know if we could figure out a way, but I think that would be great. You know, there's so many books that you have to purchase while you are a student and then you end up with them just sitting on your bookshelf collecting dust. So we could donate them back and have future students utilize them. I think that would be great. Or even if RIT could pay for the shipping so that alumni could network with current students and then send those textbooks. I don't know, just thinking creatively here. Norma, do you have an idea? Yeah, in the Washington DC area, of course we have Gallaudet here. But the last two years, I went on to the campus at Gallaudet and everyone knows that, you know, the deaf school, they have events, they have things going on. And they always have um, different fairs that you can participate in. But I was hearing stories once when I was there and I think that just being able to go to tell your stories and everything else, that's one way that NTID can can just learn about what opportunities are available. It's nice that if we'd be able to do that. I mean, not everybody has access or has young children that can go share their stories with, with these young children, but it's a possibility. I'm thinking also when it comes to things like recruitment, right? We know many students go to mainstream environments, some have deaf programs, others are in residential schools. But if you know of deaf students in your area, offer to maybe go out and take them to dinner or to socialize with them in some way. So you aren't doing direct recruiting, but they find out that you're an alumni and they might then be interested in attending NTID as well. That's a great idea. This is Christy. That's a great idea, Amelia. And if you know of any students, definitely contact Lorianne because she'd be able to coordinate and connect them with the right people in their area. But that's a great idea, Amelia. Great. There's a fun question now. What year did you graduate and what was your SVP sign? Do you even remember? This is Tracy. I forgot mine. Oh, geez. What was that? Yeah, I forgot mine. Well, I came in SVP 95. I graduated in 2000. And I think I might get confused with mine and 96. I never remember which one was which. So mine was either this or this. I think mine was this one. This is Tracy. You know, I cannot remember what mine was. Amelia's saying there's actually a website that has the sign for every year. You can look them up. Really? Yeah, you can look yours up later. You can review. Tracy saying that would be good for me. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I can't remember it. I actually didn't go to SVP. I joined the RIT SOAR program, so I don't know what the SVP sign was my year. Wait, did you ask what year I graduated or entered SVP? Graduated? I graduated in 2009. All right, I have got to think about what my SVP sign was. Come on, seriously, I should know this. 
That's okay. Mine was this. You know, the new ASL slang. Yeah, you're a baby. You just graduated. I think it's a fun tradition, though, that they're still keeping up. I graduated just 2020, just this past May. It was obviously a virtual graduation. That's a very unique experience. You know, I was thinking about what mine might be. I remember, you know, back when I graduated, you know, the long lines of people. It must have been very different to have a virtual graduation. Yeah, you'll have to look at the website to figure out what your sign was. There's some good questions here. As you know, with all the chaotic issues going on in the world, what inspirational and hopeful closing message would you like to leave the whole RIT and NTID community and its students? We need all the positive spirit we can get. Can you ask that question again? Sure. As you know, with the chaotic issues going on in the world, COVID, Black Lives Matter, what inspirational and hopeful message would you leave with the whole RIT, NTID community and students? We all need some positive spirit. This is Tracy, I'll take that one. It doesn't matter who you are. You, you are important. And it's important that you show your passions, you support what you can, whether it's COVID, Black Lives Matter, whatever the issue might be, we still need you to come together so that we all come together and we all understand that we're still learning. When it comes to COVID, you have to look inside yourself, figure out what it is that you can do, how you can support your community, how you can network with people and really be there to support each other. You know, there was an old way of doing things, but now we're in a new era and there's a new way of doing things and we need to move forward in that way and really take that inspiration to move us forward. Did anyone else want to add? Norma's saying no, I think Tracy said that beautifully. All right, what would your vision be like for NTID students as well as alumni if there's another pandemic, which we're hoping won't happen in our lifetime, but what sort of better preparation or better online services would you envision? Again, hopefully this won't have to happen. This is Tracy, that's a good question. Does somebody else wanna take that one? Yeah, this is Christy. I think there are many different ways that we can all work together to improve. Was that really the question? Yeah, it says, what will your vision look like when it comes to studying or when it comes to alumni, when it, if this were to happen again? Better ways to prepare ourselves. How do you think we could do that? Would we have better online services prepared or what else could we do? Well, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking of all of my friends, some who are educators, and I know that NTID has the MSSE Deaf Education Master's Program. They also have the ASL Interpreting Program. And I think we already have people basically on the front line from NTID who have the knowledge. And I would love, you know, if there were another pandemic to have all of them, all of us get together and have a shared source of information and shared options on ways to face different issues that are facing especially our young children today. And then you think of Deaf Plus people and the issues and struggles that they're facing. I think if there were a way to share that, plus with middle school and high school students, that would be powerful. And then you think of parents too. I'm sure that parents have different perspectives and different approaches to things. And it would be beneficial if we could get together in some way and share that information. All right, this is Tracy again. 
I think it would be great if we were able to set up something within the community and be able to share what the community ex experiences have been and what has worked and what has not worked and make some type of list that people could access to see what, what would work better. That way in the future, if this were to ever happen again, it wouldn't be starting from scratch. They would be able to see the resources that did work and see the things that did work for people and be able to implement them once again. You know, maybe have some type of archive that people could access, something that could be sent out quickly to everyone who is involved with making decisions and make it easier. This is Norma. Pretty much Christy and Tracy said what I was going to say. I think the key is people have to talk and collaborate with one another. I have three children who are of school age and I have noticed that the public school system and the deaf school systems have improved a lot and they need to continue improving. A lot of things have not worked. There's gaps. There's a lot of information that's not shared. And if NTID had some sort of system to communicate with families better, if they could model it, others could look after them. That's a good answer. Yeah, I wish we had some type of ASL hotline where we could ask questions of one another. You know, kind of like, you know, what happened in the fall, everything moved so fast that RIT wasn't really sure. They had a great network set up for, you know, hearing students, but it would be nice to have some type of communication set up like an ASL hotline. Also with technology changing, everything's probably gonna be so different if this were ever to happen again, you know? So this is another good question. Does NTID have its own chapter? Are there individual chapters in each state? Lorianne, are there individual NTID chapters in each state? My screen. Yeah, I saw that question come across and I'm happy to help. I've been trying to answer some of them as they come in. We do have many chapters around the US. Now, not all of the chapters are very active. Some are more active than others. Really, it does depend on our alumni in each of those areas to help keep things going. For example, when I travel, well, right now I can't really travel, but I hope to start again. But when I travel, I host events in different areas, but I'm only one person, so I can't be all over the place at, you know, every day of the year. What we need is for alumni to host events of their own. They can reach out to us. Maybe we can help to provide food and drinks or provide a speaker of some sort, but we could work together with individual chapters and individual alumni. If you'd like to learn more about your area, send me an email or let me know. And the board has been very helpful with that as well, especially communicating and talking about those chapters. Thank you so much for that, Lorianne. Sure, do you want me to stay on a little bit or? Yeah, we do have another question for you, actually. Let me pull that one up. Where did it go? Hang on one second. All right, I just saw it. I, and I said, save for Lorian. Okay, here we go. What specifically does NCE provide? It, does it a job search type situation? Uh, what, what benefits do they have and what can uh, someone expect if they do reach out to NCE? And do they have things at the executive level or is it all mostly newer positions? Sure, NCE provides a lot of benefits. Now, their main focus is on the students, of course, for things like co-ops and internships and permanent jobs as well. Now for alumni, they can take advantage of the same benefits. They can work together with an employment advisor. They can work one-on-one -on -one with that advisor, practice, their interview skills, have their resume reviewed, they can go to things like the career fair. You can take advantage of all of the resources that NCE has. You can meet one-on-one -on -one with someone who will help you dependent on what your individual needs are. And again, they 
network with companies all over the world with the government, with nonprofits, with large companies, with small companies. It really depends on what you are looking for. But NCE can also help you think about what sort of move you wanna make through networking or really just helping you get connections and spread the word on various opportunities out there. It could definitely be beneficial for all of you. Look at their website for more information. Amelia is saying, Lorianne, I have another question for you. Is there any update on the NTID Alumni Museum? Where will that be located? Lorianne saying, I'm happy you asked that. Many of the alumni know that we did start a fundraiser in the past and we have some exhibitions that were shown during the 50th reunion. We were able to show some beautiful things pictures and newspapers and outfits from years past really show our alumni history. It was temporary though. It was set up in the second floor of the Dyer Art Center and that was just again temporary during the 50th. We are hoping to make them permanent collections eventually and those are going to be on the second floor of LBJ. Now we are trying to, you know, it's kind of a dream. We're trying to think of different themes, whether that be student club and organizations, diversity, alumni board history. It takes time. And right now with the pandemic, things are on hold, but I am working on an exciting project that I can't talk exactly about just yet, but I can say that it will be virtual. It will be a virtual way of showing some really cool things. And alumni will be able to view those without worrying about having to physically come and be in Rochester. We're not gonna be duplicating what we're hoping to have in the museum. It's gonna be more of a complement to the museum, but keep your eyes out on that for maybe late fall, we'll be able to give you some more information. Oh, that sounds cool. I have one more for you, Lorianne, before you, before you turn your screen off. Which alumni program are, is most represented here? And also, also, how can we as alumni help foster a spirit? I mean, I know we've already had some ideas, but you know, to have more alumni involved, more activities, more programs, what do you, what do you know and what can you share? That's a good question. Now you may have thought about that too, depending on your local areas. For me, well, I think it's hard to pick just one thing that's most in need. I think it really depends on what the alumni want and have to offer. Some alumni have the skills and the knowledge that they're willing and wanting to share with students so they could come to campus or they could come virtually to campus and present to our students and share their experiences. And that's highly valuable because then students are seeing alumni that essentially are role models that are coming from where the students are today and have become successful. I think when it comes to spirit, that again goes back to those local alumni communities. We have to keep them alive and do things together. Networking really is key and helps us to be able to provide opportunities all over. Because again, I'm the alumni relations director and we're a small department and we can't be and go everywhere. Tracy? Tracy's saying, is there a website that they post volunteer opportunities that maybe alumni could see what things are in need and if their skills and expertise match that, reach out to get involved? Maybe an alumni organization or alumni association website? Lorianne's saying, that's a great idea. Actually, after this webinar, I will first of all be emailing the PowerPoint to all of the attendees. Plus there will be some hyperlinks and I'll include with that, you're right, Tracy, we do have information online. The NTID Alumni Association website 
has a lot of information and there are there is one section that does talk about volunteer ideas but now for those of you watching now you know and you can help spread the word and christy is saying i do want to add to that that representation is key so you had mentioned Lorianne, that your office is small and alumni presence is needed and is really needed everywhere. You can contribute to SLT, you can contribute to maybe the chairperson of your former major and program. I'm sure they would be happy to hear from you. You can reach out and contribute in so many ways. Plus, I think Amelia had mentioned pen pals. I'm sure there's some of you who might be comfortable continuing conversations with students whether that be one-on-one -on -one or in a small group, and they would love to hear from you. So I think those are all great ideas. Plus, you know, of course, money. I know it's been mentioned, things like the scholarships, but students always need resources and funding in order to be able to continue on with their studies. And Lorian saying, I do wanna mention one more thing specifically about scholarships. Alumni, try to remember when you give, that is essentially doubling because there is an endowed scholarship. So if you were to donate, you were to contribute $100 to that endowed scholarship, that automatically becomes $200 because of a federal program that we're under. And that really does add up and it helps the students who need it, especially today with everything going on in the world. Plus government funding is going down and it's a tough time. So that's a wonderful way to support our current and future students if you have the means. And Amelia saying that makes me wonder about chapters and alumni, you know, if there's an event, an event happening, like even a wedding, if you're out on the dance floor and you can get all of the NTID alumni together and take pictures, I've seen pictures like that that I wish had happened or I wish that I had seen years ago because there's people that I know that I didn't know were NTID alumni. You might not know that the people around you are your fellow alumni. And you know, it doesn't have to be just local things like a deaf club. We could have things like an NTID club as well so that you can continue reaching out to people. You have that opportunity, maybe volunteer opportunities come up and you already have a network of people nearby that you can contact. And Lorian saying, right, exactly. I've been in this role for about eight years now. I can't believe how fast time flies. But before I was in this role, I admit I did not know much about the alumni community and benefits and what was going on. I just kind of lived in my own world. And when I finally got involved, I realized so many things that I had overlooked. And that's the reason why this type of sharing is so important. I mean, I was saying thank you, Lorianne, for turning your video on. I really appreciate that. I want to go back and ask some of the questions to the panelists. Lorianne saying, yeah, sure. I'll let the panelists answer a few more and then I'll, we'll probably be back as well. Amelia saying, if you were president of NTID today, what would your first major project be? Christy saying that's a tall order. I think I would start by bringing in different ideas, trying to be innovative. That's where change really happens. Any other comments? Norma saying, I agree with Christy. I think, you know, there's anger and hurt and frustration that has been happening for many years, but I think really it's important to recognize, I'm not really sure how, but we need to give 
students and NTID an opportunity to unpack that. Really, they just want to be heard and recognized. I think that's necessary. Tracy? I think if I were president, first thing I would do would be to host a town hall. I would want to sit down and listen. For me, as president, I would need to sit down, but there needs to be other administrators and instructors there too. Again, we need to listen, take a back seat, and talk about the barriers that are occurring. Maybe things that we didn't know were occurring. I think right now, one of the problems is there's only one president, and I think there should be more of a cabinet. And again, you need to sit back and listen to what's going on. And Amelia is saying, thank you all for sharing. Got another question, where did it go? What are three general pieces of career advice you would give to college students as they're starting out on their career? You could each give three, you could each give one since there are three of you. Norma? This is Norma. One thing is to identify your strengths and hone in on those strengths and your skills, but don't be afraid to try new things and to branch out. Right now, my skills are pretty vast because I've tried and learned new things. I haven't stuck to just one thing for my whole career. So I would definitely say, put yourself out there and try new things. Christy's saying, I agree with Norma. Tracy, come, when you first come into NTID, try to do some self-analysis. Figure out what you're struggling with. For me, it was leadership. And because of that, I got involved. And then you don't know what's going to lead, what that will lead you to in the rest of your life. Maybe you'll end up being a manager. For me, I came and I was like, I've got a little Tracy inside of me. So I liked math and I could figure out what was going on. I have, you know, we can talk to my child's advisor and talk to them about the things that are already interesting them. You don't wanna wait and find a job and then end up hating it, but start figuring out what you like and what you wanna do now so that you're able to do things that you truly are passionate about later on. And Christy's saying, honestly, college is a time of exploration. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. What you might envision college to be, you might have a goal before you get to college. You know, in high school, you think you know what you wanna do with the rest of your life. And then you might be met with frustrations and barriers, but that doesn't have to derail you. Like Tracy mentioned, truly listen to yourself. It's important that you listen to yourself and recognize what you do like and what you don't like. If what you thought you wanted to do ends up not being that, that's okay. Listen to yourself and pivot and you never know. Sometimes what you envision and what you end up doing are completely different and that's okay. This is Tracy. It's kind of like you come in and you try on a pair of shoes and they don't fit. And then you try on another pair of shoes and maybe they don't fit. And then you finally find the perfect shoe. I feel like if that happens, even if it's your major, you try one major and it doesn't work and you try another, NTID is there to support you. Amelia is saying, our NTID students are lucky for all of your advice. Someone else has said, I've noticed that RIT and NTID is open. Do you think that they should have hosted everything online? Tracy? Before, I did believe RIT should have stayed closed, but RIT has been having discussions. They've been investing in getting prepared. And I personally think honestly, that they shouldn't be open, but they are doing some of the right things. Norma saying, this is tough because I do have children of my own that I'm keeping home, 
but at the same time, I'm trying to consider others who want to continue their education. And I think it's hard to please everyone. Tracy's saying, I think they should offer the option. If you want to be home, stay home. If you want to be in person, go to campus. He's saying, I think it's really case by case. Like you were saying, Tracy, there should be options. You never know what everyone's situation is. We have international students who maybe it won't be safe for them to come back. We have other majors that require things like labs that you can't really do online and some that you can do remotely. So I think, again, it really goes back to case by case and students approaches to learning too. Some students learn better in person. Others can get by remotely or in a completely online class. But I do recognize it's a tough time. This is Tracy. I hope RIT and MTID is documenting everything that does and does not work so that there's documentation that if anything happens, they're prepared for the future. Amelia is saying, yes, absolutely. I agree with all of you. I do think also for the instructors, I mean, many of them are older and high risk. And we have some younger people who are high risk as well. But, you know, we have people with elderly family members at home, people with young children at home. And again, it's tough to find the right answer for everyone. All right, it seems like this might be our last question. Do you have any suggestions for alumni events that could be hosted in local chapters? Of course, keeping in mind COVID restrictions and limitations, but what sort of alumni events could be hosted locally? Tracy? Well, maybe not with COVID, but you could do even on Zoom a coffee session, get together, drink coffee, have a conversation get together and have a hot lava discussion about current issues. Again, that can be hosted on Zoom. Any other thoughts? Norma? Yeah, host a book club through Zoom with other, I'm actually hosting one with other BIPOC deaf individuals. And Tracy's saying, I wanna join. Sure, come on over. Actually, Christy and I are in the same area, but we've never really, converse too much until this webinar series. So we'll have to find time to meet up with one another. I think really anything is possible. There's no right or wrong as long as you keep health and safety precautions in place. But hosting events on Zoom is totally fine. Really the options are limitless. Christy's saying those are all great ideas. I'm thinking some other ones too would of course depend on your states. I know some are a little more restricted, others can have small groups. So if you want to do something in person, please be safe and keep it within reason. Social distance, of course, recognize that people have different preferences. Some might rather an event on Zoom, others might be willing to come to something like a picnic outdoors, as long as of course it were socially distant. You could host, like Norma said, a book club or even a movie night, have a discussion about a movie. I don't know, you can make it fun and creative. All right, one additional question. Is there anything that you regret? Christy's saying, I mean, yes, I made mistakes, but that's part of who you are. It's part of who I am. So regret, I don't know, I wouldn't be who I am today if I hadn't made the decisions and the mistakes that I made in the past. What's important though, is that you learn from those mistakes. And Tracy's saying, NTID, they have so many things like tutors and the tutoring center, but I was always too afraid and my grades suffered as a result. So I do regret not just standing up for myself and saying that I needed to take advantage of those resources. For now, I'm like, I have never been good at math and I'm still not, but I wish I had taken advantage of those tutors back in the day. Take advantage of all of the resources and all of the support that's out there for you. And Norma's saying, for me, 
I definitely regret beating myself up. I was always in my head, but I didn't recognize college is a tough time. College students go through very large life changes. They're often far away from their family in a strange place with a new roommate for the first time. So you have to give yourself a break. What you go through is major in college. I remember my first year, I was so in my head. I had a lot of self doubt. I had a lot of angst and I was homesick. I wanted to go home, but luckily everything worked out. And I just wish that I hadn't spent so much time beating myself up. Amelia saying, well, thank you for all of that. There's no more questions we're gonna ask. So thank you for sharing your experiences and your advice. Lorianne, do you wanna turn your video back on? Lorianne saying, thank you to all four of you. This has been a great webinar and a great discussion. I really appreciate it. And I hope all of our alumni and the audience enjoyed it as well and hopefully learned something tonight. Really, your words inspired me. And I think there are some great ideas that came up from this discussion as well. I will be following up and having some more discussion on a variety of areas with you. The last thing I do wanna put out there is to just remind the alumni that the alumni community is here for you. If you have any ideas, if you have any suggestions, if you just need or want to chat and feel connected, feel free to reach out to the alumni in your local area or the alumni that you know, reach out to me and my office, really, I feel like together we can accomplish so much more. There's no need to feel isolated, especially in today's society. So come out and be involved. Again, I will be sharing this PowerPoint with all of you. And the entire webinar will be posted on our NTID YouTube channel. We are obviously working through a whole series, but this will be posted at some point with captioning and the voiceover. And I will get that posted shortly. So thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to our captionists and interpreters. Thank you to our panelists. And again, I really appreciate all of you being involved. Thank you to the participants for joining us tonight as well. And I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their evening. We'll see you all again at the next webinar. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone.